Hello class, this is Miss Augustine, and today we're going to talk about thermochemistry. So this is an introduction to measuring heat in the science class. And I like to point out that um, normally we don't talk about thermochemistry till chapter, I want to say 10 um, in the textbook, which will be in the spring. Um, but we usually begin the year doing a density lab, and then we follow that up with a specific heat of a metal lab. So it's um, the reason that we talk about chemistry early on is because we like to do a lab using specific heat of a metal to show how to identify substances. So what is thermochemistry? The definition is it's the study of the transfers of energy as heat that accompany physical and chemical changes. So for chemical reactions, sometimes heat is absorbed or released. And for physical changes, for instance, in order to get ice to melt, it has to absorb energy. So that's what we're talking about when we discuss thermochemistry. It's measured using an instrument known as a calorimeter. A calorimeter may be as simple as a styrofoam cup inserted in another styrofoam cup with some thermometers, or it may be really a fancy thing like this, which is a stainless steel container, and it has a container within a container. You fill it up with water, that's why it's blue, and then inside of this there's another little container, and then you've got a stir and thermometers and ignition, um, electrical leads. So in this simple one, this would be what we would use in lab. And in the real world, when you're measuring um, energy changes, so for instance, if you've ever had a package of food and it said each serving gives you this many calories, that's how they do it. They would put the food sample inside of here and they would ignite it and they would monitor the temperature of the water outside of it. And as the uh, food sample, for instance, burned, that would give off energy and that would cause the temperature of the water to go up. And then you could uh, calculate how much energy was transferred in that process. So when we measure heat, we need some more definitions. So what is a calorie? Calorie is defined as the amount of heat energy required to raise the temperature of one gram of pure water by one degree C. And so I'm going to point out here that calorie is written here with a lowercase c. So when we're talking about calories in chemistry, we're talking about this definition. A calorie is the amount of energy to raise a gram of water by one degree C. When we talk about food calories, like in my previous example, that would be a capital C, and that's actually a thousand regular calories. So one calorie with a capital C is a thousand calories with a lowercase c. So a food calorie is actually a kilocalorie. And we're going to be concerning ourselves with plain old lowercase c calories. And again, one calorie raises one gram of water, one degree C. The SI units, however, do not use calories. The SI unit uses the joule. And so converting back and forth, one calorie is the same as 4.184 joules, or one joule is equal to 0.239 calorie. So another definition, specific heat. So when we're doing these temperature changes, we talk about another property, a physical property. You can observe it without changing the substance, and that is specific heat. And it is defined as uh, the amount of energy it takes to raise one gram of a substance by one degree C. So the unit is a complex unit. It's joules per gram degree C. Water has a high specific heat capacity, and in general, metals have a low specific heat capacity. So for instance, example, if you were to make the deck around a swimming pool out of iron, and it was a hot summer day, if you tried to walk on the pool deck, you would burn your feet because metal has a low specific heat, which means it absorb, absorbs energy and its temperature goes up. Whereas if you jumped in the swimming pool, because water has a high specific heat capacity, the water would still be nice and cold. So it takes less energy to heat up a metal 
than it does to heat up a non-metal, in this case, water. So specific heat is the amount of heat required to raise the temperature of one gram of a substance by one degree C. And the equation we use is Q, that's the amount of heat, and it um, depends on the mass, the specific heat capacity of that particular substance, and the change in temperature. So if we rearrange this equation, Q equals MC delta T, to solve for specific heat, we see that C is equal to the heat divided by the mass and the change in temperature. So let's look at the de definition again. The amount of heat required to raise the temperature of a gram of a substance by a degree C. So um, defining the variables, Q is the heat measured in calories or joules, M is the mass in grams, and C is the specific heat capacity, and delta T is the change in temperature. And when we're doing um, delta T, anytime there's a delta, it's always final minus initial. So when you're doing delta T, which is delta is read as change in temperature, so delta T is always T2 or T final minus T1, T initial. So let's talk about calorimetry. A calorimeter is this device used to determine the specific heat of a substance through energy transfer. And I showed you this in an earlier slide. So when you're doing calorimetry, and for our purposes we might be using just a beaker, and then we'll set a styrofoam cup in it, and so that would give us an air insulator. And then you're going to stir and you're going to measure the changes in the temperature. So um, it also is useful to note the specific heats of water. So water has different specific heat capacity depending on whether you're talking about water, steam, or ice. And these are all constants. So for liquid water, and water is a liquid at room temperature, it takes 4.184 joules for every gram to raise it a degree C. For ice, it's 2.03 joules per gram degree C, and for C, steam, it's 2.01 joule per gram degree C. So I like to pause here and just point out that ice and steam have specific heats of roughly 2 joules per gram degree C, where water is 4 gram joules per gram degree C. What does that mean? It means that it takes twice as much energy to change the temperature of water, a gram of water, as it does to raise the temperature of ice or steam. So water has a very high specific heat capacity. And in terms of us, our lives, it makes sense to recognize that that's a good thing, because if water had a very low specific heat capacity like that of ice or steam, when we walked outside on a hot sunny day, our blood would probably boil. So the fact that water has a high specific heat capacity and we are predominantly made up of water is a good thing. So let's look at a sample problem. So the temperature of a, of a piece of copper with a mass of 95.4 grams changes from 25.0 degrees C to 48.0 degrees C when it absorbs 849 joules of energy. What is the specific heat of copper? So before we go to the next slide, let's just look at this for a minute and let's just talk our way through this. So remember the ACE method. So what are we being asked to solve for? Specific heat. What's the variable for specific heat? C. And then we're talking about specific heat, so that means our equation is Q equals MC delta T, M, so it looks like that's mass, and T, T1, T2, and joules of energy, absorbs energy. If it's absorbing energy, that is Q. So let's do this problem and let's identify those variables. So the givens are M is 95.4 grams, delta T is T2, 48.0, minus T1, which is 25.0, so our delta T is 23.0 degrees C, and our Q, the heat absorbed, was 849 joules. Notice three sig figs, three sig figs, three sig figs, 
rules for adding and subtracting. We were at the tenths place, the tenths place, still at the tenths place, are unknown. What we're solving for is C equals question mark. What's our equation? So you always identify the variables given unknown. What's the parent equation here? C is equal to Q over M delta T. Now we need to plug in our numbers. So I've done that. So C is equal to 849 joules, 95.4 grams, our delta T, 23.0. Now, I like to remind you here, when you plug this into your calculator, there are two things in the denominator. So that means I'm going to have to hit divide twice. So in my calculator, I would punch in 849 divided by 95.4 divided by 23.0. Please don't fall into the trap of dividing and then multiplying. You have to understand that if it's in the denominator, you must divide. And that is counterintuitive, but it's what you've got to do. You have to hit divide twice. If you want to do this in more than one step, you could say 849 divided by, and then multiply these two things together, and then write that down, and then say 849 divided by that number. I like to, since we're doing lots of calculations and I am uh, constructively lazy, I guess you could say, I like to do it in one step. So I'm going to say 849 divided by 95.4 divided by 23.0. And then notice that no units cancel out here. And that's cool because specific heat capacity has the unit joules per gram degree C, and there they are. So now all we have to do is write it down. So what we end up getting is C equals 0 0.387, and that is joules per gram degree C. So what were we doing again? We were solving for the specific heat capacity of copper. So now I can look up on my periodic table, find copper, element symbol Cu, look at the specific heat capacity, and compare it. And it turns out that that is the same value. So we did it correctly, and life is good. So I'm going to leave it off here for now. We'll do more, um, more specific heat and more calorimetry problems in the future. This is Ms. Augustine signing off.